March 2nd, 2024. Glenn Phillips makes history, becoming the first New Zealand spinner to take a five wicket haul in a home test for 16 years. It's a landmark moment in Phillips's increasingly impressive career, one that represents years of hard work and one that got me thinking. If someone asked you who the most complete cricketer in the world was, what would your answer be? Not the best, but the most complete, the most well-rounded, multi-talented individual. There's a good chance the answer might be Glenn Phillips. First of all, let's strip it right back. To answer that question, we need to enter the realm of all-rounders. Cricket consists of four disciplines, batting, bowling, wicket-keeping, and fielding. The first three of which are specialisms. The latter, while scalable, is basically a non-negotiable for any cricketer, let alone the elite. Now, defining what an all-rounder is, is pretty tricky, and it's tough to settle on a blanket statement that includes everyone commonly accepted as being one. Perhaps one way to think of it is someone who is capable of scoring centuries and being a frontline bowler. Capable in that sense doesn't mean once or twice, but where it's something of an expectation. Naturally, players will excel in one area more than the other, but they're able to perform both to a high level. They're game changers and tick two of our four boxes. If they're good at fielding, that's three. If they're not, it's more like two and a half because they still have to do it anyway. Cricket is this good, usually are though. Immediately, several players come to mind. Present day, you're probably drawn to someone like Ravindra Jadeja, Ben Stokes, or Shaqib Al Hassan, who've performed crucial roles for their sides across three formats for the last decade. In a T20 world, Kyron Pollard, Hardik Pandya, and Shane Watson. The generation before that, Sean Pollock, Andrew Flinoff, Daniel Vittori, Shahid Afridi, and Jack Callis, who predominantly played tests and ODIs, but still caught the start of the T20 boom. Back through the 90s with Chris Cairns and Sanath Jaisaria. The 70s and 80s with Tony Gregg, Mike Proxer, Kapil Dev, Imran Khan, Ian Bolden, Richard Hadley and Clive Rice. Before them, Keith Miller, Vinu Mankad, Richie Benno, Alan Davidson and perhaps the best of them all, Garfield Sobers. The list could go on. Some enjoyed more storied careers than others. Some boasted better numbers. Some played in better teams. Some barely even played international cricket at all. Some, as we've established, have even played different formats. But all of them have a claim to all-rounder status. The last discipline yet to be explored is wicket-keeping. Naturally, keepers don't really bowl and bowlers don't really keep, and the skills required for keeping wicket aren't exactly identical to those for standard fielding, so how do we account for them? Well, while not exactly the same, we could consider wicket-keeper batters as all-rounders since they're still performing two of the three specialisms. Across formats, A.B. de Villiers, Adam Gilchrist and M.S. Dhoni would be just a few players whose genius with the bat or gloves could turn a game. Rishabh Pant and Joss Butler come to mind as more modern-day examples, while someone like Andy Flower thrived through the 90s and early 2000s. But where does Glenn Phillips fit into all of this? After all, this is a man with seven tests, 30 ODIs and 70, 40, 20 eyes to his name, boasting barely a thousand runs and just 29 wickets in anything lasting longer than 20 overs. Why has he been mentioned in the same sentence as some of the greats of the game? Well, let's first take a look at how we got here. Born in East London, South Africa in December 1996, Phillips' family moved to New Zealand when he was just five years old, where he progressed through the age group setup in Auckland. He made his list A debut as an 18 year old in January 2015 and got his first taste at the international level at the 2016 Under-19 World Cup in Bangladesh. Phillips enjoyed an impressive stint playing club cricket in England and took his prolific run scoring back home to New Zealand enjoying a breakthrough 2016-17 summer. In the space of just two and a half months Phillips notched centuries in all three formats becoming the first player ever to do so in a New Zealand domestic season and made his full international debut against South Africa all at the age of 20. A special talent had arrived with some even likening him to a certain Brendan McCullum. August 2017 saw Phillips' first foray into the then somewhat fledgling world of franchise cricket, a stint in the Caribbean Premier League, a competition he would later owe much of his future success and transformation to. A run of T20Is with the gloves in the middle order followed for New Zealand, but Phillips struggled. He was dropped for Tom Blundell in the deciding T20I the Pakistan series in January 2018, and left out of the tri-series against England and Australia the following month. An excellent 2018 CPL campaign earned him a recall for a tour of Pakistan in late 2018, but 42 runs in three innings striking at 84.31 in unfamiliar conditions did little to impress. 
Another quiet Super Smash campaign followed and Phillips found himself out of the international reckoning for the entirety of 2019, asked by the management to improve and expand his game before being given another opportunity, addressing issues that had been exposed against the short ball. His red ball form was outstanding though, scoring the third most runs in the 2018-19 Plunkett Shield with 610 from 10 innings at 76.25. Phillips produced another dominant CPL campaign mid-2019 and, about to turn 23, saw his stock skyrocket in the final few months of 2019, rediscovering the prolific form of that first summer across all formats. A first-class turn against the full-strength England touring side made people take notice. A staggering knock in the Ford Trophy blew minds, and a 61-ball 106 not out in the Super Smash capped off a whirlwind few weeks. Around the same time, New Zealand had embarked on their tour of Australia. Phillips answered an SOS and was rushed into the test squad ahead of the third test with New Zealand 2-0 down and players struggling with illness. He arrived with a first-class average of 42.54 from 23 matches, offering versatility to a side in dire need of fit players. And so, somewhat out of the blue, his test debut arrived at Sydney, top scoring with 52 off 115 in the first innings as New Zealand went down 3-0. Fresh off a surprise test debut, Phillips returned to finish the domestic season. Auckland lost the Super Smash final but won the Ford Trophy, while the Plunkett Shield was cut short due to the pandemic. In a way, Phillips benefited from the enforced break. After a tough introduction to the top level in 2018 and time out of the side, he found himself back in New Zealand's T20i plans for their first series since the pandemic. The second T20i of that series signalled his re-arrival to the big stage, a brutal 108 off 51 against the West Indies. He's never looked back and has been a mainstay in the side ever since, playing 63 of New Zealand's 80 T20i since the start of the pandemic. Now 24, May 2021 saw Phillips surprisingly awarded his first New Zealand central contract and embark on his first two non-CPL overseas assignments. He lit up the T20 blast, smashing 500 runs for Gloucestershire, the second most in the competition, before transferring that form over to the inaugural season of the 100. He returned to the CPL the following month, this time with the Barbados Royals, and was the leading run scorer for his new side. Phillips earned his first IPL call up off the back of that good run of form, replacing Joss Butler at Rajasthan Royals for the second half of the 2021 edition in the UAE, though opportunities were limited. Firmly part of New Zealand's plans, Phillips then played all seven games at the 2021 T20 World Cup, but again, struggled to make an impact, faltering in the same conditions that spelt the end of his first stint in the side three years prior. Two tough tournaments did little to hurt his reputation though, and Phillips was picked up by Sunrisers Hyderabad for 1.5 crore in the 2022 IPL auction, though he didn't feature in the tournament. Keen to prove his credentials across all formats, Phillips mixed white ball power with red ball routine and excelled in the 2021-22 Plunkett Shield. He made his long-awaited ODI debut on a tour of Ireland in July 2022, before top scoring for New Zealand in the 2022 T20 World Cup later that year smashing a best of 104 from 64 balls in a low-scoring affair against Sri Lanka and lighting up the tournament opener with a stunning diving catch. Back with the red ball, Phillips' first Plunkett Shield campaign with new side Otago went about as well as he could have hoped for. 347 runs in five innings, including one century in 250s, averaging 69.4 and striking at just under 70. He bowled more overs too, notching 87 across the first three matches. Retained by Sunrisers for 1.5 crore, Phillips had a quiet 2023 IPL campaign and largely struggled for game time due to the squad's composition. The ODI World Cup rolled around and Phillips played all 10 games in the middle order as New Zealand made it to the semi-finals. He was player of the match in a 149 run win against Afghanistan and starred with the ball in a five run defeat to Australia. Then, nearly four years after his debut, Phillips finally played his second and third test on New Zealand's tour of Bangladesh in December 2023. Trusted to bowl more overs in the subcontinent, Phillips took five wickets in the Silet test to add to his important 42 from number seven. New Zealand lost comfortably, but Phillips' return was a success. The second test at Murpur was even better with Phillips earning player of the match for a truly special all-round performance. He picked up 3 for 31 in the first innings as Bangladesh were bowled out for 172 before scoring 87 of New Zealand's 180 in the play. Not required to bowl in the second innings, Phillips arrived at the crease with his side 51 for 5, chasing 137 on a lively track. That soon became 69 for 6, but Phillips was unfazed, steering the Kiwis home with an unbeaten 40 not out alongside Mitchell Sander. How's that for versatility? Back home, Phillips retained his place for the series against South Africa's Weekend 11 before Australia arrived for a rare visit. He top scored with 71 of New Zealand's 179 first innings runs in Wellington before becoming the first New Zealand spinner to take a home Test 5 wicket haul since 2008. 
A quiet second test followed with Phillips scoring 18 runs across his two innings and taking one for 41 of 17 overs, but he still made the headlines for a stunning catch to dismiss minus Labuschagne. So now we know the story, what makes him so good? If we revisit those fundamental disciplines, Phillips does something very few others in the sport's history could lay claim to, especially not at the elite level. He ticks all four boxes. He is truly multidimensional, and to understand how that's possible, we need to learn a bit more about Phillips the person. Phillips has ADHD, which in his own words, is like a little switch that flicks me above the rest when I bring out the energy. He's always busy, always trying new things. From archery to mountain climbing to surfing, there's even time spent on a flight simulator with dreams of becoming a commercial pilot. Phillips is always on, all the time, and it's easy to see how that translates into his cricket. In a way, his ADHD and obsessive personality is to thank for him becoming this well-rounded, multi-skilled cricketer. Phillips is not tall at 5'7", so he's had to find his own way to thrive and survive in a rapidly evolving world dominated by white ball power hitting, strength training. He benches 150kg, squats 210 and deadlifts 230. His power is frightening, his drive and dedication relentless. Little surprise then that Phillips is among world cricket's fastest scorers in the middle overs, but power is not the only characteristic to his game. Phillips is innovative, daring, adaptable and seriously smart, all in equal measure. It's the reason he holds New Zealand's record for the fastest T29 ton. It's the reason he's able to strike from ball one scoring 25 off seven at the death to win an IPL game. It's the reason he's able to play shots like this, accessing every part of the ground. And it's the reason he's able to score runs in Bangladesh when nobody else can to win a test match. He's worked hard to mold himself into the archetypal, versatile modern day batter, whether that's by pumping weights in the gym, working on strike rotation against the spinners during CPL stints, or mastering his array of ramps, scoops and sweeps. Phillips is also one of, if not the best fielders in the world, and it's all made possible by that same power and explosiveness. He's assembled a highlights reel very few can compete with, littered with stunning grabs in the ring and running diving efforts in the outfield. Phillips' first stint in New Zealand's T20 side all those years ago was as a wicketkeeper, but in truth, he's been trying to shake that tag ever since. A back injury meant taking the gloves in the longer format was never really an option, and he even admitted that he's not really enjoyed doing it since he was a teenager. If needs must, then it's what the team requires. He'll pull the gloves on occasionally, like in the 2023 IPL, but it's a job he'd rather not do if possible. And that's not because he's no good at it, he still very much has the ability. It's because it stops him from doing something else, bowling. That five wicket haul against Australia referenced at the very start represents seven years of Phillips trying to prove himself as a genuine all-rounder, as a genuine off spinner. As we established earlier, Phillips doesn't do half measures. If he likes something, he becomes obsessed. He'd always love bowling and turn his arm over every now and then in the Plunkett Shield for Auckland, but meaningful opportunities were limited behind specialist spinners like Will Somerville. With the white ball, his usage was even more sparse. So Phillips took the plunge and changed his domestic team in 2022, moving from Auckland to Otago, hopeful that it would increase his chances of bowling more and develop his all-round game. And to be fair to him, you'd have to say the gambles paid off. Phillips is still rarely throwing the ball in T20Is, but his influence in New Zealand's ODI side has increased dramatically. In his first 16 ODIs, Phillips bowled on six separate occasions, taking five wickets in a combined 20 overs. In the 14 ODIs since, he's bowled in every single match. 10 of those 14 came at the 2023 World Cup, where Phillips bowled 40 overs and took six wickets. Unquestionably, his best performance came against Australia at Durham Shala, taking incredible figures of three for 37 off his 10, in the highest scoring match in World Cup history. Shortly after, Phillips's perseverance and hard work paid off in Bangladesh, taking five wickets in the Silat Test, including a first innings fourfer, and three for 31 in a famous win for New Zealand in the second test at Murpur. And that brings us to the latest series, a rare visit from Australia, where Phillips was preferred to Santa. That alone told you something about how much his bowling had improved. Five for 45 from 16 overs in the second innings confirmed it. This is no longer a case of a batter bowling part-time darts. This is a genuinely talented spin bowler, prizing out wickets with side spin, shape and bounce, varying his pace, beating good players in the flight and getting them caught at bad pad. The transformation has been remarkable.
Of course, it's still early days. Seven tests, for example, is not a big enough sample size to be jumping to conclusions, but Phillips has shown enough in his 366 runs and 17 wickets in a format. There's something to work with. He could hardly ask for a better calendar of fixtures in 2024 either. As one of the most destructive power hitters on the planet, there's a T20 World Cup in the US and the Caribbean on the horizon, and the chance to properly prove himself in the IPL after a few false starts. There's also the prospect of six test matches in Afghanistan, Sri Lanka and India in late 2024, presenting another intriguing opportunity to bowl in favourable conditions. He averages more than 33 with a batting test, ODIs and T20Is, striking a very healthy rate relative to each format. He can hit the ball from ball one, craft an innings, pull off a rescue heist and finish an innings. His bowling has progressed so much in the last 12-20 months that you wonder where it might end up. Those white ball averages will surely plummet, while even doubling the red ball average would be pretty respectable. He's electric in the field and should he really want to go back, the gloves will still be there waiting for him. Only time will tell how that all plays out. Who knows, maybe he'll have taken up umpiring or scoring or invented a fifth discipline. After all, that is the Glenn Phillips way. All action, all the time.